Have you ever heard about somebody clipping their audio and realize Logic doesn't have its own clipper? We're gonna fix that today. Logic actually does have a clipping tool. Hi, my name is Tyson. I am a mastering engineer here at Dinosaur Dog Mastering. And today we're gonna to be talking about clipping inside of Logic using stock plugins. Uh, before we get to the actual content, I do wanna let you know I have a free guide or free checklist that is the ultimate mixing checklist. You can download it for free just using the first link in the description to get better, faster, and more professional mixes. With that said, let's dive straight into the content. Today we're gonna to be looking at clipping inside of Logic Pro, how to do it with stock plugins versus premium plugins as well. We're just gonna give an example of a premium plugin so you can tell the difference if it's actually worth to buy a premium plugin for clipping versus a stock plugin. Logic Pro has the ability to clip, although it's very not well known. <laughs> what is clipping to begin with? Clipping is essentially similar to limiting where it doesn't allow audio to pass a certain threshold, but instead of just compressing the signal down, it actually just clips off the top of the audio. So this is gives it a unique flavor and unique sound rather than limiting, but it still allows you to increase headroom. Um, but by clipping off the top of the audio, it does in introduce some distortion distortion, but it's unique as a composed to saturation or just overdrive distortion or any other type of distortion or compression. Clipping is a unique technique that a lot of people use to increase headroom without sacrificing volume. Because it's adding this, this unique type of distortion, it's also just a stylistic choice of using clipping rather than just limiting or any other uh, style of compression or distortion. Um, I have my drum bus set up and I already added my, uh, my premium clipping plugin here uh, along with some gain to gain matches. So I did use an extreme example I had this, you know, cranked almost all the way just so you can really audibly hear the difference between an, a non-clipped version versus a clipped version of the audio. Obviously, I probably would not go this extreme in an actual mixing scenario, but just for the sake of example, play the raw audio, raw drum track for you, and then I will add this on top of it for you. And I'll talk about a little bit about what I think about this plugin after If you're listening closely, you can hear that additional distortion, especially on that kick drum, that it's, it's clipping off the tops of those peaks. One reason why I'm not a huge fan of this plugin, to be honest, it's not because it doesn't sound good. Like it, it does add, you know, that, that kind of beef and, and distortion that is very common, especially in rock songs um, on your drums. However, the reason I don't like this plugin is because it's very, very hard to gain match. Um, because I've added this gain plug and if I just played this on its own, it's just blaringly loud. And when you're actually using it in a mixing scenario, you want to be able to gain match to determine is the change I just made good or bad? Is it helping the mix or is it hurting the mix? I don't know with this plugin until you add another plugin and another gain plugin afterwards to gain match it. And it's just very obnoxious to try to actually utilize this plugin and understand what I'm doing. The other reason I don't like it is that it doesn't show me how much gain is actually being reduced. I don't know how much I'm clipping the signal. I'm just kind of guessing with whatever secret algorithms they have inside this plugin that it's working as it should. I have no idea. Want to know exactly how I'm impacting the audio. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of this plugin. I never use it, to be honest, for, the, for those said reasons. Now let's take a look at the stock logic clipper and I'll show you exactly how to set it up to set it up as a clipper rather than just a compressor or limiter. I have this compressor pulled up here and the key in order to turn this compressor into a clipper rather than a compressor is this distortion. So you want to go to instead of it's usually the default is off. You want to flip it all the way over to clip instead. This will add that clipping distortion and actually start clipping your audio rather than anything else. And the other thing is you want to turn your threshold all the way up or your ratio all the way to one to one because you don't want the actual compressor to be doing anything. What you want to do is you want to turn this limiter on and then uh, obviously 
move your threshold to where it's actually clipping. What I've done here is I've turned my limiter all the way down to negative 10 and then also the input gain up just a little bit to ensure that the audio is being able to catch um, essentially on that limiter and it's actually doing its job and then clipping it. And then I have this output gain set to level match that afterwards. So my peak volume is still the same, similar to what we just heard with the JST plugin, JST Clipper. This is gonna be doing the same exact thing. So we'll do a little A-B test against both of these really quick here. So I'm gonna start with the stock logic and then we'll go to the JST. So you can tell that there's definitely some tonal differences. The stock compressor ten, or stock clipper, I should say, uh, tends to add a little bit more uh, body to the to the drums here when we're clipping it rather than the JST is more kind of top end heavy, which gives it kind of a more like rock metal type of feel to me. Um, and so it's granted like all of this is just kind of the fine tuning of the sound anyway. And so you can obviously compensate for with other things like EQ and, and other saturation. But to me, the usability of the stock compressor is just so much higher. I can obviously see I'm getting exactly three decibels of gain reduction on while I'm clipping this. And it's just so much more effective to be able to use it and know exactly what's happening inside of the, the machine here. So that is why I honestly prefer the stock logic clipping functionality over the premium plugin. I hope this is helpful to show you exactly how to clip things in logic with stock plugins and why it actually might be superior to other plugin, other premium plugins that you can purchase that are on the market today. All right, with that said, thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.